Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here for this information session. As many of you know, it's part of a series that we organize uh, when some calls are open. Some of you were already there for the cooperation projects session. And today we have this new session for Culture Moves Europe. You know, it's a call with a high impact because it covers and funds different kinds of projects and we know you're interested in in this aspects as, uh, as in pre previous occasions we will have some presentations in english so you can check on the lower bar in your on your computer you have a little globe an icon which is a little globe and there you can choose english or spanish uh, for the language of your choice. Uh, so, well, if there, if uh, you in the audience, if you can uh, want to listen in English, you can do that. But if you want to listen to a Spanish version, you should click from the beginning on the Spanish option. Options you will get the interpreting when there are English presentations. Mm, we are the Creative Europe team. We have uh, Carolina, uh, Isabel. They won't be today there live in the session uh, speaking to you, but they will be behind the cameras uh, managing the questions that we receive from you. Uh, uh, I want to remind you to do this or to post your questions on, in the Q&A section instead of in the chat and they will be reading those questions out loud so we can address those questions to to the corresponding speaker uh, it, we're going to have the same organization as in other occasions we have uh, the first presentation by gosha thank you once again gosha for accepting our invitation it's true that we are very interested in having the commission present here uh, with us so we can get to know what are the lines what are the the, the policies that inspire this call and then we also have another good friend of us already, like Gosha Loli Pesiger, uh, representative of the GET Institute, um, the institution managing these uh, these funds, these grants. And then, as you know, we always have a case study. In this case, we have Alvaro Martinez, a visual artist. Uh, we've uh, been with him in other occasions, so we we also want to thank him for 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 being here and for sharing his experience with uh, us all his experience with all this process at the end of these three presentations we will have the q a session uh, you can as i told you send uh, your questions uh, through the q a section throughout the whole presentation and then we will also send you a survey. Uh, we are very interested in getting your feedback, if, if possible, please, because it helps us in designing future information sessions like this one. I want to apologize, but uh, I, I, I know that many of you have seen this, this slides already, but for beginners, for those of you who are not familiar with these, I think it's interesting to know where this call is coming from. It's a call that belongs the, to the program Creative Europe, and it, it began well, as an office where we were receiving many applications, many requests, um, because the, the program with its guidelines, its cooperation guidelines, wasn't covering, wasn't, didn't have a, a, a big enough scope because you were interested in mobility. And well, the Commission reacted to this concern in the cultural sector in Europe. And that's why we started, we created this new, this new call. Uh, Ipertunus was the pilot and it was very successful. We had different initiatives in the different sectors we had for translation, for visual arts, for performing arts, but well, we saw the impact, the big impact it had, so we decided to create this new call, but it is a call within the Creative Europe program. 
we are uh, in charge of the communication, the, the sharing this uh, program, but sometimes when we don't know exactly what to answer you and what is the information that you we need to give you, we we well we ask the, the commission for this information and the Getty Institute, which is a as I told you, the institution managing the the program itself, the, the call. But it's like performing Europe and music moves Europe. We were we are we're having these uh, calls also next week. So it's calls that belong to the Creative Europe program. We even saw some artists uh, like like Alvaro and sometimes well there are things about their experience that you can learn about. Well, that's why we have Alvaro today. Here we have uh, the lines and policies of the commission. They are uh, working in uh, fostering, developing, and promoting cultural diversity and linguistic diversity. So, so that's the, the, the task of the commission. And that's a second objective, which is uh, increasing competitiveness and uh, economic potential of, of culture initiatives, cultural initiatives. You know that Creative Europe have uh, two sub programs on the 30th uh, in the afternoon. We will have a face to face uh, session as well with the culture sub program and music program. You see here the percentages of the uh, of uh, all the initiatives on the budget. We have thirty three percent for culture, fifty eight percent for media, and nine percent for intersectoral initiatives. The global budget is two thousand four hundred million euros. So it's uh, much bigger than the one we had before the pandemic. And then we have all the different awards, the Culture of Europe, the Music of Europe, and Perform Europe. And within these uh, sectoral actions, that's why, why, why I have this red square. We will also organize the Perform Europe and Music of Europe sessions. The competences are uh, are very clear anything related to audiovisual otherwise if not it belongs to the other uh, actions we belong to the culture ministry uh, the competence of sports with the new structure is in a different uh, uh, ministry but we will continue having these and then we have the intersectoral programs, like we have the Creative Innovation Lab and also support to the, to the communication media. Some, well, the Commission is concerned about um, sharing this news through the uh, different holdings and, well, so we are familiar with all this sector as well. And well, this is a presentation that we've shared many other times before. You know about this, but Creative Europe in Spain, we are a project as well. We always say it's a cooperation project with five different partners and a coordinator that we have here in the ministry, which is the, the, the the person responsible and leading the program in Spain and in Europe. So we have the culture office. I always insist, uh, I mentioned this first because we cover all the territory, the whole national territory in the cultural sector, except for the audiovisual. And then we have the media office and they do the same throughout the whole territory. They are a foundation, so they do not belong to the ministry. And then the three um, territorial offices, País Vasco, Catalonia, and Andalusia. 
So they have the competence, the power for all the media initiatives and programs in the whole territory, and in our case, for culture initiatives. You know that we are a public entity, we provide consulting, we, we, uh, we are a non-profit entity, so we help you find sometimes partners for these um, projects or initiatives, which is also another one of your concerns. We have a huge uh, database with all potential partners in, uh, in Europe and where you can also find a link. You can download your form and fill it in. And so, so we work in two different directions. Of course, we also offer training sessions and mentoring uh, initiatives through experts. So we contact experts in different topics, relevant topics. So on the 30th, we will have this uh, first session. As I told you, we will, we will share it on streaming as well, but it's going to be a face-to-face -face session, so you can join us. And we try to obviously attend all the events where we can uh, contribute with our participation. Basically, this is what I wanted to say. Many of you already knew all this, but I think it's interesting to, to, to mention it. And after explaining this uh, general context, I give the floor to Gosha, representative of the European Commission, who will uh, tell you a little bit about the, the, the philosophy of all this program. Again, thank you very much. They always say yes when we invite them and for us that, that's so important. Thank you very much. Gosha, the floor is. Gracias, Augusto. Hello, everybody. So as uh, Augusto already introduced Creative Europe to you, to, uh, I imagine that there are always some new uh, commerce to our Creative Europe family. So I will not focus on the Creative Europe, but just on the Cultural Moves Europe and the new logic that is um, dedicated to this scheme. And so for those who know a little bit of Creative Europe actions, Cultural Move, Moves Europe has nothing to do. Uh, we have a new logic because we have a new target audience. So this is the, the biggest novelty. But the scheme itself is a novelty. As Augusta said, we are coming from the testing uh, period, testing phase, it was called iPortunus, and we have now experience of one year of uh, Cultural Moves Europe. So in total, during three years, we will have, um, um, I have a message from the interpretation system. I don't know if for the interpretation it's fine. I'm supposed to confirm the language I'm speaking. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, sorry for this. Um, so, uh, as I said, this is the new uh, action and for three years we will have launched three calls for each uh, action because we have two for individual mobility and for residencies. And in total, we will have 7,000 individual uh, grantees, so 7,000 artists and cultural professionals that will be uh, beneficiaries of this action. And uh, uh, as I said, the novelty is mainly in the different logic because we are targeting for the first time uh, directly individual artists and cultural professionals, which is a great challenge for us. Uh, and this is why we are asking you share this information with a potential um, um, with artists that are potentially interested in, in this action as well, because uh, uh, options are uh, quite, uh, quite uh, rich. You can choose uh, many, many uh, opportunities and uh, will grant uh, lots of, uh, lots of um, uh, grants. Uh, the, the other novelty is that this action is self-initiated. Uh, so the artists and the co- um, and the and cultural uh, professionals are co-designing, uh, of course, within a certain framework, but you are uh, choosing your destination, the subject you are going to work, uh, the duration. There's a lot of flexibility. You will see, uh, Lolly will say in her presentation all the time, it's you who choose. And this is really something we are insisting on. Uh, you have the total freedom for your project to implement as you wish, with whom you wish, and, uh, and where you wish. Also, we are focusing on uh, three political priorities of, of the Commission, but also of the Creative Europe program. 
so-called uh, cross-cutting issues. Uh, the first one is, of course, uh, greening. Uh, both uh, we focus on uh, green practices when it comes to traveling, uh, but also for your practices. Once you are uh, implementing your project, think about uh, greening of your practices, doing something that it's more uh, sustainable. Um, then a very important aspect is inclusion. We wish our action to be inclusive, but we do not have a strict definition of inclusiveness. We want that uh, everybody finds uh, a place to, to, to be part of this action. Um, and then digit, uh, digitalization is the third uh, priority. Uh, I would say also that something that is crucial, although you may not see it, is that we have simplified a lot uh, our uh, procedures, both financial and administrative to make it uh, really easy for you to apply, but also for us to, um, to be able to efficiently deal with this number of applications. I would just uh, underline that we have changed the approach and we are using clump sums, which is something different and maybe not all of you are used to this, but uh, Loli will explain this more in detail. And of course, we are here to, to uh, reply to your questions. And also uh, using the opportunity that I'm speaking to the uh, Spanish public, uh, we cannot insist more on the fact that if there are artists from the Canary Island, from Lanzarote, Tenerife, Fuerteventura, La Palma, Gran Canaria, or all the others, uh, please feel a, a part of this project. We have even a special, uh, special uh, focus for you. We have a special top up for you, but. Uh, as an applicant, but also you may be uh, you may become international partner of someone who would like to come to your place to to your uh, region and uh, work together. Uh, last point, which is crucial for us, of course, is that since we are uh, here in the Creative Europe program, so European program, and here even a bit more because we have some countries outside the, our continent. Uh, we insist on this cross-border collaboration, uh, creating bonds with people from other countries. This is crucial. This is the added value of European projects. This is something that we cannot do uh, in our countries uh, at the national or even regional uh, level. This is the main part. So please, when you apply, insist on, uh, on this in your um, applications. And um, as I said before, uh, we would be grateful if you could um, uh, share this information with other your fellow uh, artist colleagues co uh, or cultural operators because we have a, really lots of grants to to offer for you and i will then give the floor back to <clears throat> to augusto and we make a presentation of the scheme and of course i'm uh, here for your questions gosha it's very interesting uh, to see what's behind the call um, from the beginning, as uh, we've clearly seen, well, it gained relevance due to the amount of applications that we were receiving year after year, which is uh, it's great. It, that's, uh, it proves its success. And I would like to insist on in two things that you mentioned. One is that the paperwork is uh, has been simplified, uh, the whole process. So it's true that we all think that all, all that paperwork is sometimes uh, tedious and, and, and difficult. So, but we simplified the process. And also you mentioned the potential candidates uh, or potential beneficiaries from the islands. So we, we want to insist on that we organize a specific session for uh, those um, faraway territories uh, with a special complement. We, we, we have a case in Spain, but also in other countries in the, in the Union. And well, now we give the floor to Loli so she can explain, you can take your notes. She will probably tell us uh, many interesting things about the application process. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Augusto. I'm Loli, coordinator of grants, and I'll explain some of the technicalities about how to send your application. Well, I guess that most of you know, are familiar with Culture Moves Europe. It's a project financed by the European Union and executed or implemented by the GET Institute. 
for the mobility of artists in the 40 countries that are included in Creative Europe. Uh, we focus on individual mobility and residences. We have two different lines of action. I'll explain both of them, but basically it's uh, individual mobility and residency. And uh, it contributes to travel and subsistence costs. And we also have some additional top-ups depending on individual situation of each uh, beneficiary. We also have some measures to uh, encourage green mobility. Sectors that are eligible in Culture Moves Europe for both actions are architecture, cultural heritage, design and fashion design, literature. Uh, this is one of the, this is a new sector that was included in the second call. It includes cre literature creation uh, and translation also into languages in the, uh, in the languages included in the countries uh, that are covered by Culture Moves Europe. And it's only for fiction works. Then we have music, performing arts, and visual arts. The countries are the 40 countries included in Creative Europe and their outermost regions and overseas countries and territories. In the case of Spain, the Canary Islands, like Augusto mentioned. This list, you can find it on this, in our social media, also on the website, in case you want to double check any other countries. And basically, basically throughout the whole program, uh, we are granting 7,000 uh, grants until 2025. We already had uh, 1,500 in the first call, and the total budget is 21 million. I'm going to focus on both actions, but just to give you a quick overview, we have the individual mobility action. The grant is for the artist, so he, so the artist can travel to another country uh, to implement their their creative project. And in the res residency action, the grant is for the legal entity for the institution that wants to be the host for those artists that can want to come to a, a country to implement their project. Now I'll focus in the individual mobility action. The second call was open on October 2nd this year, and it will be open until May 31st. You can send your application at any moment since, since right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But we, we always suggest to send it four months before you want to travel for the implementation or the execution of your project, okay? What are the eligibility criteria? Well, you need to be at least 18 years old and you have to be a legal resident in a creative Europe country. We don't, I mean, it doesn't matter the nationality or your citizenship, you just need to be living in the countries. Then you need to be active in one of the sectors that I mentioned before. And what about resending an application? You can only send one application per person and per call. For example, if you send an application uh, in the previous call and you were a beneficiary, you received a grant, you cannot send, you cannot send one. Uh, but if you did not get the grant, you have a new opportunity. And in this new call, you can resend your application or do it in the third call, which will be open next year. We also accept group applications. There are many questions about these. Mm. It's, it's easier than it seems. Um, when you are going to send an application uh, through the Goethe Institute website, you can choose the, well, sending the application as an individual or as a group. And then once you choose that, they will ask you who's the second person, the third person. So you do not need to do anything specific. It's just, a, well, you have that option on the website, but it is, very good for people who have not maybe collaborated and, and they want to do it for the first time, you can use this, this option. But we do always ask you to describe the role of each member of the group in the project, right? So when you when, when you send the application, you know, that's some of the information you have to fill in. Members of the same group can come from different countries, different sectors. The important thing 
is that they need to be in the same country for the same period of time, okay? For the, the travel needs to be all together. I will, I will explain this further. The artists will need to find a collaborator and an international partner, which will be the one hosting uh, them in the, in the foreign country. They will need to explain them how to how things work in their country to have that that joint project. To choose this international partner, well, the artists can choose what's the ideal collaborator or partner for for their project. So you, tell, you have total freedom. For this this is very positive because the artists can really choose. They 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 can decide on what to do, where, and with whom. This international partner needs to based in a creative your country uh, and in the application form you need to specify that well it, you need to show how the partner is relevant for the purpose of the project that you're describing we will ask you also for of, uh, of that partner which can be well maybe an email or a letter signed by that international partner the document needs to include a description of the partner the name of, of all the applicants so if it's a group application you need to be sure to include all the complete names of the uh, partner of the members included in that document uh, also a project timeline and also an overview about that collaboration and the dates, the dates of the projects and the date of uh, the, when the, the date of the document when it was signed. The application needs to be in English. It's not because we don't like Spanish, but English is the uh, working language of the people who are going to assess the application. Uh, the um, duration of the mobility action can be between 7 to 60 days for individuals and from 7 to 21 if it's a group application. The destination has to be one, a single destination. If you mention more than one country, um, more than one destination countries, the application won't be eligible. But if you are well if you are choosing a green travel option and you need to pass through other countries to get to your destination that's okay okay and then the implementation needs to be uninterrupted you can only start the travel after the grant agreement is uh, grant agreement is signed so our golden rule is one project, one partner, one destination. When you send your application, you will need to choose two objectives among the following uh, objectives, that, objectives that you can see here. To explore, uh, to travel to, a, to another country, to, to get inspired, to work on your project, then to create, that's another uh, objective. If you really want to, uh, to, to engage in the creative process of creating a new piece, to learn, for example, if you want well, maybe to access non-formal learning or a special collaboration with, a, with an artist, or to connect if you want to develop your professional um, um, network. This slide is extremely important for us in the Goethe Institute and, and for you as well. So you don't make any mistakes when you are sending your application or even afterwards when you are sending a report. Um, the travel needs to begin in the country of your residence, where you are, uh, where you have your legal residence. We've received many questions and we, we've seen that it's necessary to give some time for that travel, which is 15 days since the moment that someone 
leaves the country to go to the destination, you need 15 days to get there. It doesn't mean that you need to take, that it needs to take you 15 days to get there. But for example, well, if it's a good one, or for people who are choosing green, option, green mobility options, well, this increases the, the well, maybe the number of, of days, the amount of time you need. But what is really important is that all the people in the group are in the destination country at the same time. If it's not like that, you may have problems afterwards when you are sending your project report and maybe you will lose the grant. Okay, so this is very important. Everybody needs to be at the same time in the destination country. So this is why we offer this 15 days. And these are the days that we are offering the, the, the duration, the, the expenses that we are offering. And also to finish at the same time, the same day, all the members of the group need to leave the country to go back to the country where they where they live. I we received many questions. I'm, I'm an artist, but I'm doing I'm, I'm doing different residency actions, so I don't want to go back to my country. But this is one of the rules for this program for, for this action. Okay, you always need to go back to your country. Um, what is the money that you're going to receive? Well, the mobility grant includes two different sections. We have the daily allowance and then the travel allowance. In the case of the stay of the daily allowance, we have an amount of money per day in the destination country, and it's 75 euros per day. And then for the travel, depending on the distance, if it's below 5,000 kilometers, it's 350 euros. And if the travel, if the distance is over 5,000 kilometers, it's 700 euros. If the country, destination country is less than 600 um, kilometers away from the origin, you cannot travel by plane. That's also another rule. And if then we see in the report that you did take a plane, you have the risk of losing the grant. Also, depending on individual circumstances, we uh, offer additional top-ups like the visa top-up for expenses related to visa processes or for the family top-up for applicants with custody of children below the age of 10 years old during the mobility. Uh, that's around 100 euros, not per, not per child, but it's a fixed amount. Then we also have uh, a top up for people who are coming from overseas countries or territories or outermost regions, which is a top up of 150. Also for people uh, choosing uh, green mobility options, we offer 350 uh, uh, a 350 euro complement and also for people with disabilities uh, that affect their ability to carry out the project they can also um, uh, apply for these uh, disability uh, top up uh, our team will uh, will contact those uh, individuals to see the amount that they that they need depending on their circumstances it, we're talking about physical mobility, but there are some exceptions uh, when we talk about countries with uh, uh, serious threats to safety. Uh, in that case, maybe the artists can ask for, can request a virtual mobility action. In that case, we have a 35 euro daily allowance to cover subsistence for internet connectivity, for example, but we do not offer any amount for travel allowance or we don't have the top ups either. Now that we know how much we would be getting, the, the question is when we are getting that money, right? So 75% of the mobility grant and 25% of the disability uh, support in the case, in the cases when where it has been requested, it will be sent to the beneficiary up to 30 days uh, after signature of the grant agreement. And it's before the mobility action. And then when the mobility 
the action finishes and when the beneficiary sends the report at the end of the program of the, of the project, they will get the rest of the of the amount. And all the other um, top ups or or supplements have will also be received at that moment after the project. Then we have the activity report. I'm going to, well, I'm, you see that I'm sharing my slides in English, so you can get familiar with the, with the, what you are going to see when you send your applications, because the, all the processes is in English. You don't have to create a document, a PDF, it's just like a survey, it's a, a Similar to the application form, it has three different elements, a reflection questionnaire about how the project went, if you achieved the, the, the objectives, uh, of these kinds of questions. Then you have another section where you send or you attach all the proof of uh, mobility action, any transportation tickets, any accommodation invoices, uh, all bills in, in the case, well, maybe supermarket uh, receipts, uh, anything. And also a letter from the international partner confirming that the collaboration took place and uh, that everything went well. And then finally, a series of pictures so our team can see what happened and if everything worked out well. It's our favorite part to see really the artists, uh, what they were doing and how they were able to implement the project. So take cool pictures, please. I love, we, we, we love uh, seeing them afterwards. And uh, these are the selection criteria that our experts or evaluators will uh, take into account. And the goals, uh, right, explore, create, learn, connect. If you remember, it makes, uh, well, we check whether those objectives make sense with the project. Then the relevance, is the, is the mobility necessary for the project? Or maybe you could have done the same thing at home wearing your PJs, right? So we, we need to explain why we need that travel for the project. Then the preparation, if the, if the artist has really made the effort to find up uh, an international partner, if there is a clear idea of collaboration and if everything is well prepared and planned. And then sustainability. We check or we assess whether the artist, the participant is considering sustainability. If, well, I don't know, maybe trying to use recycled materials or uh, using public transportation in the destination country, eating local food well so so just to make the participant think of all these green actions that can be additional to their project then the impact um, in this section you need to convince the evaluators that your project is going to have a long-term impact that it's beneficial for society that it's really going to have a positive impact there's no way to actually check whether that is happening uh, in the short term but what, what we need to you need to convince the evaluators that you are able to to, to achieve to to get that positive impact in the future then we have this monthly timeline we have a monthly deadline because the call is open for a long period. So every day, every last day of each month is the, the monthly deadline. So all the applications sent before that day or received after that day will go to the next phase. So well, very soon, the deadline in November will be November 30. That's uh, the next monthly deadline for the second month. So all the applications that will receive between November 1 to November 30 will be uh, sent for assessment. 
Then we check for eligibility. Our team checks uh, all the applications. They check that it's in English, that, they, that you've answered all the questions, that all the documents are there. And then all those applications that are eligible, they, they are sent to our panel of experts and they are the ones who check well, what I explained before, whether the objectives are clear, if the project uh, has good quality, if it's been well planned. And then after all that, they're the experts. We have uh, a jury, a panel that will get that will decide on the final list of beneficiaries. Then we send the results to all the uh, applicants, beneficiaries or not. And these results, you will receive these results in between six to eight weeks after the monthly deadline. So if you send your application November 1st, your monthly deadline is on the 30th. So this means that your results won't, you won't receive the results until six to eight weeks after November 30th, okay? So sometimes it's it's normal that people get get anxious and why you're not we receiving the results. But, but well, you need to understand that there's a process that we need to fulfill and, and complete the, the all that process with it with its deadlines. Then we prepare the grant agreements and we send them to all the beneficiaries. And that's why we recommend that you always need to send the application at least two months. I mean, you need two months after the monthly deadline to initiate the action. Okay, so that's why we suggest that you send the application for four months, okay, at least four months in advance, so you will know uh, when you are able to travel according to the call, because that's one of the most common mistakes. Is that people want to travel very fast and that's not, it's not possible so then the application is not eligible from the start just because of that because the, tra the expected travel date is, is too early then you need to well what do you need to do you need to create a, a, an account in our website uh, GAP, get the application portal so create the account regi register as an individual send the application and please prepare all the documents we get many blurry documents or documents with fingers uh, blocking important information relevant information and that goes against your uh, interests uh, in the application process so it's very important that you scan the documents properly that you have that all the documents are clear readable okay we need the official national id a proof of legal residence a short cv and also an artistic portfolio uh, in the case of groups if it's your first uh, application your first action or your first collaboration well we understand that you don't have a portfolio but at least you need to create um, a little portfolio for the application where you include some of the uh, work that you've created individually and then explain what you are going to do together, okay? And then also a proof of that collaboration with the international partner. Then residency action, and I'm I really, I want to apologize because I'm the only one talking here. Uh, this is very long, but well, uh, pay attention to all the information. And then if you have questions at the end, we will be able to answer those questions. For the residency action, uh, the call was launched on October 16. Uh, in this case, it works a little different because it's uh, just one call with uh, uh, a specific date where it begins and, and an, uh, an end date as well with just one round of, uh, uh, of application process. And it will be open until January 16, 2024. Okay, we will have a new call in the spring of 2024. This call is for legal entities registered and based in a creative Europe country. 
They need to be active in at least one of the eligible sectors, and they want to host the residency for artists or cultural professionals residing in other Creative Europe countries. These legal entities may be non-profit organizations, um, public bodies, foundations, companies, self-employed uh, individuals as well. Um, and uh, then the eligibility criteria, again, uh, the hosts need to be registered as legal entities um, in creative Europe countries, and they need to be able to implement the project, they need to have the facilities, the staff, they need to be able to host the artists, and they need to prove these in the application. You can also send one application per legal entity and per call, only one per call. And in this case, uh, the legal entities can resend an application even if they have been beneficiaries in the previous calls, okay? So you receive a grant, but you can receive a new one in, in, a, in, a, in a future call. And then the participants um, that are indicated, they need to be over 18 years old. They also need to be active in one of the mentioned sectors, and they need to be legal residents in Creative Europe countries. For the participants, the conditions, the requirements are pretty much the same ones as in the individual mobility action, okay? And then again, same thing, the application is in English because of the panel of experts, uh, that's their, their language. So the duration can be between 22 to 60 days for short programs, 61 to 120 days for medium uh, residences, or for long duration residences between 121 to 300 days. Again, same thing for implementing the project. You need to, you can start only after you have signed the grant agreement. Participants can come from any countries and sectors, but they need to be present in the facilities of the institution at the same time for the same period. What are the objectives in this case? Uh, you also need to choose two objectives, the same ones as for the individual mobility action, but we add a fifth objective, which is to transform, to contribute to the change in the society in line with the new European Bauhaus values and principles. What are the requirements? Well, the institution needs to be able to offer accommodation for the artists. It can be, well, maybe renting an Airbnb accommodation option, or if they can do it within their premises, that's also cool. Um, they also need to be able to offer a, a safe working environment for all the artists. Uh, they need to have the relevant equipment, all the qualified staff, etc. And we also require for them to have at least one mentor. So that is a person to well, to do the follow-up of the artists and giving them guidance to, to for the project. In this case, the organization cannot uh, ask for any fee or registration or, I don't know, any, any uh, payment from the artists. That is forbidden. That's what Culture Most Europe is for. Okay, so if the team discovers that the institution has uh, asked for these additional payments, uh, we will, uh, you will have the risk to, to, of losing the, the grant. We will have a hosting coordinator, which is a contact with Culture Moves Europe in case there are any specific needs, and a legal representative who will sign all the official uh, documents and will be. Uh, legally liable if there are any problems and the same person can take these three these three roles it cannot it doesn't need to be uh, different people the application process it has two different phases this is also something different with the individual mobility action 
First, the first phase is about the project. You need to explain what the project is about. Um, and a legal entity will send the, the application explaining this. Then it is assessed by our experts and the institution will receive the notification. Only the applications that are uh, selected during that first phase, they will be invited to the second phase. And the second phase is where you need to include all the information about the invited artists, where they are coming from, for how long they are staying, that affects the amount of uh, money that will be received with the grant. So it's a, a little different and it's when you need to include all this information. And it will be validated by our team. So we make sure that all the information that we need is there. How can the uh, legal entity choose the artists that they want to invite? Well, there are different ways. They can uh, assign or nominate a specific artist if they already know, or we can also open um, a, a call with our team. We, we can help you with this. We always try to have this open call so all artists can participate. And we also in Get Institute, we organize some matchmaking sessions where uh, 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 entities that are beneficiaries of the, of the grant they can connect with the artists who can well maybe get in touch with them, see what projects they are interested in. And so it's also an option for, for networking and for them to, to contact each other. The money, the amounts is, they are the same. We have the hosting allowance for covering the cost that the organization has. And those are sent to the legal entity. And then we have the mobility grant and the top-ups, which are for the artists. The residency grant, the hosting allowance, is 35 euros per participant and per day to cover well those accommodation expenses or material, etc. And then for the artists, we have, well, the same as in the individual mobility action. Mm, it's a daily allowance, 25 euros per artist per day in this case. And then the travel allowance, which is uh, the same. Under 5,000 kilometers, 350, over 5,000 kilometers, 700 euros. And if it's less than 600 kilometers, never, never, never take a plane for the travel. Then we have the top ups. In this case, the one that is different is the disability support, which is up to 75 euros per day of project implementation. And also for the um, transfer of uh, the money, we have two different installments, 60% of the hosting allowance and the mobility grant, and also the disability support, up to 30 days after the signature of the grant agreement. And the rest of the amount will be sent after receiving the residency report. Selection criteria, well, the same, uh, premises and services, uh, if uh, we need to see if the entity really has the appropriate premises and services to host the artists, then the selection of the participants, it's also something that the experts will assess, the kind of collaboration, uh, if uh, the entity is offering this uh, mentor and if they are guiding the, the participants in the project, the relevance of the project as well, whether the project is uh, relevant, um, it really needs the, the grant, the mobility grant for, for uh, the proper implementation, then the impact Again, the same, um, if really we can prove, if we can convince the evaluators that the project has a positive impact, will have a positive impact in the future. And also the sustainability aspect, if the participant bear this in mind. 
for the info card, the second phase, only for those entities that have been selected during phase one. The deadline will open from March, the 5th of March, 2024, until the 15th of June, 2024. We uh, says we evaluate and, uh, and check the applications continu on a continuous basis every time when we receive them. And then the changes are limited whenever if there is a problem and we need a change, you need to contact the Kutumos Europe team. We have a legal the person responsible for these legal aspects and they will decide whether well this really these changes are necessary to send the info card we will require for an id of the citizen proof of legal residence also the portfolio on the cv the final travel itinerary and also any necessary uh, applicable proofs for the top-ups the same about the residency report uh, it's very easy you fill it in online you receive the invitation from our team to to fill in the info card and you have the reflection part the proof of uh, the, the residence project and then the pictures on phase one is the application deadline, which is January 16th, 2024. Then we have the assessment of the applications. We check the eligibility, the, all the panel of experts, and then the jury. And then we send the notification results, just like in the individual mobility action. Then we have the second phase. So it's opened only for the candidates that have been already selected. Uh, it'll open on June, uh, until June 15th. We will do it on a continuous basis when we receive the applications. And again, the minimum time you need to begin your project is uh, April 5th will, will be the, the earliest date. And you can only do it after you've signed the grant agreement okay so please don't do it too tight with the time because there's a risk that you won't be able to sign the grant agreement or or implement the project or so please um, plan well ahead okay plan the plot the project well ahead because it, it makes it really easier for you and for us because we only want to to really be able to give you all these grants well, and again, uh, you have to send it through the Get Application Portal. You find all the all these links in the in the call document. And if after reading the call document, you still have questions, well, uh, take advantage of these webinars. Also, the question time that we have for both actions every Friday at eleven. Uh, we have three for individual mobility and one for a residency every month okay so you can contact us there you can also contact us by email but it's very important that you read thoroughly read the, the call document and then it's when you need to send proof of your legal entity uh, with residents in a creative Euro country the artistic and creative portfolio and also a short cv of the mentors in this case and well um, some people tell us, well, can you please read our, our application? Well, our team cannot read the application and the teams in the different uh, Creative Europe uh, offices in Europe, they cannot read the, the application, but we can do, we can give you some advice, which is read the call carefully to make sure you understand it. Be sure that all the conditions to apply are met. And please, again, I insist, insist the documents. We don't want pictures of your passports with fingers on top of the information. Please just make sure that all the documents are clear, readable. And, uh, and well, go uh, cut to the chase, explain briefly and clearly what your project uh, is about. And then if you have any doubts about, I don't know, maybe because of, uh, of uh, English, maybe you can ask another uh, a friend of yours, an, an artist, a member of your family to reread the application because, well, sometimes from the outside, some people can give you a different point of view. They can, well, they can give you some advice. So. 
And this is the link where you can send your application. And if you have any other questions, you can really get in touch with us um, through many different channels, uh, our social media, the online events that we have on Friday, uh, every Friday. Uh, you can get in touch with the Creative Europe desk uh, and also in our portal. That's all. I was not controlling um, time, so I, I hope I, I didn't use too much time, but I'm, I'm ready for your questions. I think there are two messages that are very important. They, they need to read the call thoroughly. And well, those of you who are there at the other side of the screen today, you are the ones who can um, see what, what what you need. We we can we can help you, but you are the ones who who know the information, who know what you what you need to to offer. You have the well. You have to adapt to the way that the, the, the process is created also very important those sessions that you have every friday as you said that's it that's amazing it's very useful it's very good to know that every friday you have that option so instead of going to the portal that we we use well you have that uh, channel direct channel with get institute then we will have the questions. We have many questions there. Carolina and Isabel are already answering those questions, but we will see also some of them during the Q&A session at the end after the presentation, because now we are going to have the presentation of the uh, case study. In, in, in this occasion, we have Alvaro, like we said at the beginning, he's a visual artist. And if I remember well, he was in Berlin, but, but well, we'll let you uh, share your experience with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I just wanted to, first of all, encourage you all to apply for these grants, because after my experience, I've been applying for many grants, actions, residencies, and I want to insist that the application process is very easy, very easy compared to, to other um, actions. And so, well, I'll tell you more about the application, but I'll tell you a little bit about my project. I don't want to take a lot of time because uh, we are a little bit tight with the time, but my project was a, a multidisciplinary uh, project. I work with video, text, photography, but especially video. I want to insist on that because for me, it was uh, a question like Loli explained Explained, there is a culture uh, program uh, within Culture Moves Europe. We have the culture section and then the media section. Media is for audiovisual and the culture is for the rest of the disciplines. But for me, it was very important to have a part of video in my project. It's not the main one, but so I asked and they told me that it is allowed. It's not allowed for a project to be just video, but if it's just a part or a, or a component of, of your project, well, uh, that is allowed. So just so you know, for those of you who may be interested in this same, these same kind of projects, I'm going to share my screen so I can tell you a little bit more about the project. So, this, so my project, it works with different disciplines, but it's also a combination of two disciplines. It's, a, it's an art project for me, or well, for me and for anybody who can who want to understand it that way. It, it's an art project that uh, comes from the necessity, from, from, uh, from, uh, from a specific need, but it's also a cultural management uh, project. And let me explain. My my partner is an artist workshop uh, in Berlin with artists with uh, intellectual disabilities. And I've been wanting for years to, to do this, but I never had the, the funds or, or it wasn't possible. So, and I say it's an art project because it's portraits, videos, audio interviews, text, all kinds of documents about these artists and about their art, the way they work, 
but it's also something that the workshop needed. These artists, it's well, it's 43 artists. You can see some portraits here. They, they produce, they work 35 hours a week as artists in this workshop. They organize many, many exhibitions. They, it's not a, a leisure center. They, they work a lot. And what they needed is they needed a, a cultural manager to to, to, to put together, to, to, so to tidy up or to organize a little bit all the production that they had. Um, for example, a database of all, all the uh, the material they have. That's, uh, well, uh, that's something I created, a database with all the pieces they've created, the, the measures, uh, the date, but also have portraits of the artists for advertising, for communication. So they have these needs. Here you see some more pictures. For me, it was very important as well to have videos, as I mentioned, and I'll show you uh, some uh, brief pieces. Because many artists with intellectual disabilities, they have problems when they apply for, for grants. Uh, mm, it's it's not uh, I'm not criticizing this because they but because uh, mm, a creative Europe program has mm, done very a lot of work in this sense but but in, in some other times uh, these kind of artists they cannot apply for these grants because well maybe they cannot write or they cannot use a computer or they cannot elaborate complex uh, concepts like we usually do in in the art world so for me it's, it was very important to have these little video portraits of the artists so um, artists with uh, intellectual disabilities can also maybe use them to apply for for grants or for different residency actions to different programs because they can introduce themselves using, well, uh, some of them, they don't speak either. But I, in those cases, I even filmed them in the workshop, working with their pieces. So I think this is very important because uh, it'll, it'll be difficult because in many application processes, it's you have to do it in writing or you're or you're out of the, of the eligible uh, applications. But but well, in some cases, maybe it'll help. So I'm going to show you this one, for example, uh, a video portrait of Leah, uh, uh, Down syndrome, uh, an artist with uh, Down syndrome. And it's very interesting. So you can see this brief presentation. Mein Name ist äh, Ria. Ich habe mein Theater, mein Theater und auch für den Kunst. So, ja. Well, that's a, a little introduction. Then we also have this one, Torsten. Torsten is an artist. I think he's 56, 57, and he's obsessed about the Berlin subway. You can see uh, his pieces in, uh, in the website of the workshop. He, he draws uh, subway stations, among other things, okay? And for example, in the video I showed you, I, I went with him to the place where we were, to this station, and, and here you have his video. So habe ich, so stand ich und habe so das Foto gemacht. Guck mal hier, so. Ja, hier, Alexanderplatz. Well, uh, if you're interested, you can check the website. There are other videos. I have this other 30 second video and then I will upload some more. Mm. So to make it short, I think this is an interesting project, not only because of its artistic aspect, 
uh, the, the, the art or the, or the artists themselves, but because of that closeness, some, some people maybe are not in touch with uh, people with intellectual disabilities. And, and here, especially through the videos, but also the, the, the work, uh, you can, well, maybe um, show that the, the closeness of this, these artists Usually, we have a lot of discrimination in the society. People don't get close to these people, maybe to not to bother them, right? It's mess, sometimes it's even positive discrimination. Um, but I think that, well, these people, they are professional artists. They have an agreement with their company. with, um, And so, so it's their profession. The only thing they need is for their society to really... to. to to gain that trust of uh, from the society to pe for people to see them as artists not as people with uh, intellectual disabilities okay and i also wanted to to say that for creative europe for the get institute um, which is an entity managing the the applications i think that these kind of projects can be interesting Mm, because of what Lolly was saying before, you you need to go to the place, you need to travel, uh, to go to, in this case, to Berlin, otherwise the project is not possible. And also another important aspect was well, doing something. In, in this case, I was working with these artists, but maybe it can be other projects for citizen participations or community actions um i think that what creative europe is looking for is for us not to go to another country to just paint our our, our piece our own piece if if there's no collaboration with all the people right what they want is to 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 establish that network it can be maybe with other colleagues or entities and I also want to insist on something else. In my case, uh, I think it's very important, which is the travel itself. I live in Burgos, and this is how I traveled. You can see it on the screen. This is how I traveled to Berlin. And for um, a lot of people, maybe they would, they would understand this as, as holidays because it took me a week. But I, I think that it complies with the sustainability uh, criterion in the in the call right you also can use the opportunity to interact with other artists other uh, cultural operators in my case i left from here i went to uh, marseille uh, and it's not that i just went to the beach i had i wanted to go to marseille uh, for years uh, because of some uh, um, initiatives that there are there. So I, I also use that for, for creating, for establishing that network. I, I contacted some colleagues before. So um, traveling this way, uh, it's true that you get the top up, which is interesting, but it, but it also was very interesting because I could have just flown to Berlin by plane, but I would have missed all the other things that I experienced on the way there. I, I went to Marseille by bus, then from Marseille to Strasbourg by bus, and then from Strasbourg to Berlin by train. It was hard because it was many hours, many hours in the bus, but it was an amazing experience, and I would recommend that to anybody if you have the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was one of the best things of, of, of the travel. It was a very good idea. Uh, to, it's been a very good idea. Uh, from Europa, uh, Creative Europe to, to include these these top up and this uh, incentive. And then, well, you do. I mean, you don't need to have a perfect English to for the application. You don't even need to give it to a third person to to. They just need to be able to understand. They are not going to judge your application by your level of English. You can just introduce your text in Spanish or in your language, and translate it with Google Translate. I mean. Mm, people don't speak perfect english and, and i mean so you just they they just need to understand what you are explaining okay that's that's not the criterion for for judging your application and then uh, the amount that they give is is very is it's adequate is the appropriate one 
for example, they don't cover production costs, but in my case, I was able to cover all my transportation expenses, all my uh, daily expenses. Well, if you need uh, production, if you have, you need a bigger budget for production, well, maybe you need to look for additional funds somewhere else. But in my case, I already had my camera, my video camera and everything. So I didn't, I didn't need to cover that. And well, with all these, I don't want to take much more of your time, but well, I give you the floor uh, again, Augusto. Well, thank you very much. Alvaro, if you had to say just very quick, like three pieces of advice, very practical advice for, for people listening. Well, the partner, don't look for your partner through creative Europe. I'm sure you help, you can help people a lot, but I think that uh, you need to find your own partner. You are the one who knows um, the, the collectivity or institution or, or what kind of uh, partner you are interested in. In my case, I, I had known about this uh, entity for years or or maybe I don't know. You travel to you traveled abroad and you discovered a cultural center that you really like. There are many many initiatives uh, in Europe, and they are really interested in being our partners. Another piece of advice: well, do something um, with a high level of participation. Um, find that collective action because when you can access these these grants these these funds it's it's good it's you can do it much better so all these um participated initiatives or when you feel the support from the from these funds the european union i don't know it's it's much better and then a third piece of advice well just to enjoy it it's a great opportunity so I know that in the art world, some people take advantage of these things to to travel, to just to travel and be in their own bubble and maybe some holidays. But I think it is a great opportunity to work in what we'd like, which is uh, art. And, and for me, it was very, very positive. I'm, I'm very grateful. Are you going to apply again? I think I can't, but if I could, I would. No, but I remember um, I, I sent you Creative Europe because this, well, the, I'll tell you again, this is this can be a good experience to then apply for our other programs. Yeah, actually, I wanted to pose this question afterwards, but I'll ask you now. Since I've been a beneficiary, uh, can I next year, I would like to invite these artists to come to Spain. Could I be the host? Well, Lolly will answer that question. Yes, if you are registered as a legal entity, uh, you can. I'm a freelancer. Y yes, then you can. As as she said, well, you need to have the characteristics, the, the, the facilities. You, you need to be able to guarantee all that, but yes. Okay, well, so then let's move to the questions. Carolina is there uh, to manage the questions. I see we have a lot of questions. You can also uh speak up uh, you have the microphone you raise your hand and then we will open your microphone so you can ask your questions live as well we have 36 i would like to ask about a specific example can an individual be part of two different projects in the uh, mobility projects in two different applications with different leaders no uh, no and thank you for asking this each person can send just one application even if it's a part of a, of a group with another leader another responsible person of the project um, we find applications and with with a person with the, the main applicant in a group and then that person is included in another group in another application and both applications are rejected okay so so no thank you for that question next question then jorge asks would it be possible to consider for a green mobility top up part of a group mobility five people's journey coming from a peripheral region but neither consider uh, overseas country or ultra peripheric countries it will mean that the total distance from home city to mobility host city is in total one way 
1,700 kilometers. The group will take a flight for the first part of the journey, 700 kilometers, and then complete the rest, 1,000 kilometers. So more than 600 by sustainable mean of transport, namely bus, and we'll be doing the same for the return trip. No, in order to receive the green uh, mobility top up, the whole travel needs to be uh, green mobility. We know that sometimes when there are no options, when you're traveling from an island to another island, or but, but if not, no, it's not possible to apply for the green top up. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I understand that the uh, top up for uh, outermost territories need to be the ones specified, right? Not just any far away uh, territory. No, yes, yes, it has to be included in those, in the list of uh, territories and countries. And in this case, if they are traveling from one of these regions or to these regions, you cannot have the Mm, green top up if you're taking a plane, but you can get the specific top up offer for these regions. Okay. Okay. Jorge also asks Will activities such as training course, workshops, and networking events be considered as suitable to achieve objectives and expected outcomes of a group of uh, individual mobility projects? Are there any other examples or of, of activities to be considered, or on the other hand, I, activities that might receive a low assessment? Basically, I understand if there are activities that are eligible or not, but may receive a better or worse assessment. Yes, that's also a very good question. Um, I'll give you the full information. Alvaro already mentioned that the uh, objective in the audiovisual sector is not eligible for these actions. But about the objectives, the objective to present or exhibit some artistic pieces, if that is the main objective, that is not eligible. Of course, if you go to the destination country and you develop your project there, and then at the end of the project, you have an exhibition, well, that's okay. But it's not eligible if that is the main objective of your project, uh, of the application. And about the academic sector, yes, well, workshops or presentations, that is eligible for, for the grants, but what is not eligible is formal training, okay? Um, I don't know, maybe studying a master's program or um, something that could be uh, could be receiving an Erasmus grant, for example, that is out of this uh, option. But workshops or other non-formal training initiatives, yes. We also received many applications for PhDs. No, that's not eligible either. Thank you very much. So formal education, not eligible. We have another question about the timeline and deadlines, Jorge. The call indicates us recommended to apply four months in advance of the expected mobility date. However, it also permits 60 days to months as an allowable period to start mobility after the application deadline. Will that make a difference in the assessment or if the mobility has been, has been well prepared and planned properly to achieve the results phase, the application deadline is, is not a, a criteria to consider for evaluation? I think I'm lost. Uh, I think that, well, on one hand, he's mentioning... Uh, Gosia, would you like to, to reply? I thought you raised your hand. Oh. Yes. Ah, okay. So maybe. Go yes, I, I got the question. Go so uh, first, uh, the the deadline, the timeline of your project is not evaluated. This part is being checked under the eligibility criteria. So just to see if it's feasible. This is why we say uh, two months is the strict minimum to, for us to be able to conduct the evaluation eligibility check, etc. And for you to get the notification on time before you can start. Uh, so we say two months is the minimum, 
and we uh, advise for months to be on a safe side, to have time if there are some unpredicted uh, situations that happens. Uh, this is why there is this distinction, but this is not evaluated. This is purely formal request. Thank you. Thank you, Gosha. So two months since the monthly deadline, not since you send your application. That's important for me to clarify. So since from the last day each month, right? Yes, that's it. About uh, the tax aspect about these uh, grants, uh, are these uh, amounts exempt from tax or are there any tax reductions or so I guess it depends on each country, right? Yes, they asked that question. I sent it to Lolly. She said it, it depends on uh, each country's legislation. And basically, well, the, the grants are, are not very big. So, so it, it's a question that we had already received. Thank you. Pablo asking about the selection process. If you have more than one partner, is it better for the assessment or also organizing different kinds of activities in the destination country? Does it add any additional score? Well, this aspect, so specific, well, they are not assessed as part of the evaluation. What we evaluate is that the whole application is consistent depending on the needs of each project. We always say that the artist is free to do whatever they want. Well, of course, they need to comply with the rules. But it's true. If this project has an objective and we require it requires different activities, we are not going to assess whether it has more activities or less. What you need to do is what, what you need for your project, what the project needs. And the evaluator will assess whether it's consistent. And, and well, that, that's not what you need to worry about. Yes, Loli, and also a question that we are always asked, quite often asked. We always say that the um, project need to be to, to react to an opportunity. I mean, it's uh, the logic of the project itself, what sets, what you need to do, more or less activities, but not because, well, you need to, you want to do more activities so you're able to collaborate with more partners or to, to take advantage of the program, right? So it, it needs to be consistent. We look for that harmonization of the project with the, with the different criteria. Thank you very much. A new call for residences in the spring, which will be for what period? We don't have the dates confirmed yet for the third call. No, it's it's not it's not uh, defined yet, but we will publish it soon in our social media. Thank you. And about the documents that we need to include, the portfolio can it be a uh, a link? Can it be a digital portfolio? I'm gonna say no, but because we receive many PDF documents that only include a link and it's good it's it's better that the portfolio is a document that you've prepared it's like it needs to be nicely presented you may include a link but but you need to prepare like a, a document okay so for the evaluators can always click on the link but i would always recommend and suggest and encourage everybody to prepare uh, a nice document and with a nice presentation. They can also add the links if they are relevant. Okay. About the first uh, residency call, uh, which is open until January, until when can the residence, residencies be, uh, can, can, can they be carried out? It's always a year since the grant agreement was signed. So if the person is going to travel in, I don't know, let's say June, the end of June, uh, the, the artist will sign a grant agreement valid for a year. So that is the last, the, the date until 
which uh, the residency can be carried out. And we don't know the exact date when the grant agreement is going to be sent, so we need you to have an estimation in advance, with enough time, and uh, not to take the, the risk to, to leave it for the very last minute. And about the matchmaking sessions that you organized, how can they register for those matchmaking sessions? You do it through our social media. We always, when we publish the dates for the matchmaking sessions, we always uh, post the link where artists can register. In the case of entities, uh, our team will contact them and will ask them if they want to be a part of these sessions. So for the entities that want to be a part of the sessions, we will publish a list and then artists can register. We don't have the dates yet, but we'll always access our social media so you can be updated about this. Tanya has three questions about the individual mobility call. I understand that there is no budget for the internet or no grant for the international partner, right? No, in that case, no. And then about the residency call, she asks if it's for entities that have already been offering residencies and they want to uh, host all their artists, or can it be an NGO that has never organized uh, an artistic residency, but they want to do it? For example, if we organize, an, uh, an, uh, well, this is another question. If we organize a residency uh, within the cooperation framework, can we also ask for five participants to participate in the program through the other actions, the other grants in Culture Moves Europe. Well, this uh, has to do with double financing. I'm sure that Goshi can explain it better. But answering to the first question, mm, yes, if, if you've never, even if you've never hosted a, a, an artist, uh, you can do it. Actually, cultural it's, it's great for a first residency, but they need to make sure that they comply with all the requirements, that they have the facilities, that they have everything they need to actually host and, and have the, the artists there. And about that double funding, you can always apply for all their funds but it needs to be funds that are not coming from the European Union for the same project for the same duration. I don't know if Gosha can maybe explain this a little better. Sí, gracias, Loli. La pregunta es si bueno, la persona que va a la acción de movilidad o la entidad que organiza la residencia no pueden recibir dinero de la Unión Europea para el mismo proyecto, para esa misma acción. Pero, por supuesto, sí se necesita un mayor presupuesto, sí que se puede intentar conseguir otra ayuda, otra financiación que puede ser una ayuda regional, nacional, de, o incluso ayudas de fundaciones eh, privadas. Y eh, bueno, es algo que sí que recomendamos. Perfect, great. Thank you. And about the eligibility of the sector, uh, do you have textile art that will be part of visual art? Well, the, the, the sector that we would consider it to be in depends on the project. We've received some uh, textile art projects that were included in heritage, for example. I don't know. I don't know this project specifically, but it may be included in visual uh, arts. Yes, it depends on how the project is uh, designed, okay? Yes, it can be included in different uh, eligible sectors. Pablo is asking, we are a cultural organization, and in 2024, we're going to have a project with a plastic artist in Spain living uh, in Germany. Could this person ask for the mobility uh, uh, grant? Yes, if the person is living in Germany, they can be invited to, she can be invited to Spain. So it's the 
place the country where the artist is living, not the not the citizenship. Yes, exactly. Similar to that, is it possible to travel to the same country that you're coming from? In this case, it would be no, right? So, so, so no, the citizenship, no. For example, I'm, I'm Spanish, but I live in Belgium, so I can uh, apply for Culture of Europe to go to Spain. It always needs to be international mobility. Okay. Is there any way for an artist, if they're not a legal entity, to go to a residence in another country, or it's only individual mobility action in that case? Well, it's different. I mean, we need to differentiate between who's applying and who's uh, receiving the money, right? Yes, in this case, if we're talking about a man, an artist who is not registered as a legal entity, but uh, the artist would like to go to one entity to do a project, well, you can go to the matchmaking sessions to try to find an organization or or you can organize a project yourself and look for an, an international organization but i understand seeing the question that you, the artist wants to go to an organization on an organization where they already have a project about the residency grant, uh, the proof, uh, can it be a certificate? Uh, does it need to be in English? For this kind of documents, like the national ID or the proof of legal residence, uh, we accept that they are in another language, but we always ask if it's possible to include a translation and an additional page with the translation of the document, especially if they are documents with a lot of text, which are not, maybe not so clear. Okay, thank you. We have 39 questions and we are out of time. We are going to answer a few more. And uh, so we were telling you we you can always contact us by email or or contact us through all the other channels. Another question about mobility: Can we have the grant to for a course? Well, as we said before, right? If it's non formal education, non formal learning, that's fine. I don't know if you need to add anything else, Lolly. No, that's it. We we already answered. What is the legal bond? What is the legal relationship needed from in between the mentor and the entity? Well, I, I don't think we need to have any legal relation with needs to be someone from the organization, but I don't know. They can send us an email if they need us to, to give a specific answer, seeing that the, the person we, we can consult it with our team. Then they ask again about the next call in 2024, because they don't know if they will be in time for this one. We cannot say the dates, but there will be a new one in the spring in 2024, but we don't have the dates yet, right? Yes, that's it. For new companies, uh, residency projects that are about to begin, is it enough to send a CV of the mentor if they don't have, if the artists don't have mm, already uh, uh, experience? Yes, uh, new companies. So residency projects that are about to start, is it enough to send a CV of the mentor? because you are usually asking for the CV of the entity and the mentor, is it enough if they just send the mentor CV? Yes, but we also need the proof of registration of the entity I, and because we've received also questions about people who are registering the entity, but they, but it's not completed, it's not possible. The, the registration process needs to be completed, okay? And we do need the curriculum, the, the city of the mentor. Marta is asking about the residency call. What data are necessary for the first phase? Are there different kinds of, uh, of forms? 
I don't know if you want to add anything. Can you please repeat the question? What are the data that need to be included in the residency calls for the first phase in the form? Oh, yes, it's where, where you need to choose the two objectives. You answer all the questions related to how relevant the project is. You describe the project or you include also the documents, the registration of the entity, the portfolio, the CV, the mentor CV, and this is basically it, all the information that has to do with the participants that will be hosted, that goes in the second phase. But but you can read all this in the, in the call document. For individual mobility, is it possible to ask or to apply for the grant uh, to, for an entity to apply for the grant? I I guess not, right? No, no, for individual mobility, no. Okay, thank you. Magda asks, the residency grants, you only cover the artist's stay, but you're not paying any fees or indirect costs for the artist? in residency well there's an amount that is for expenses for the entity's expenses which are an amount per artist per day and that is for the entity for the organization and then the organization uh, will uh, give the mobility grant to the artists that were that are hosted Thank you. They were asking about the new Euro European Bauhaus. We included a link on the chat to access for more information. But someone is asking how this affects the residency call. Well, it does not affect. It's just a fifth objective that can be added for the project projects that are related to the values of the new european bauhaus uh, well they can they can choose it just one another objective that can be chosen together with uh, the other list of objectives but that that's it yes yeah, so it's just a new option yes thank you manuel is asking whether the individual applications can be if, if an artist, an amateur artist that is about to start their career uh, for emerging artists, can they apply? Yes, yes, of course. And uh, Culture Moves Europe is perfect for these. And emerging artists who are about to start a new career, I encourage them to start their applications. Veronica has uh, sent several questions. We are a contemporary art center in Huelva. We have a long experience with residences, national and international, and we are interested in doing a program with artists from Ireland. From Ireland. But the question is, can we apply as a resident as, for the residency action and then the artists, if they could apply for their, uh, for their mobility? Right. In this case, the participants can only receive the grant one time. So, so they can receive one residency grant. The institution can send the application as many times, about one per call, and they can receive the, the grant, but the artists could not be receiving the residency grant twice, more than once. Thank you. Uh, well, she still uh, explains that they want to have uh, experiences in different countries and then put everything together in an exhibition. So, uh, but the, so the, the same people could not be beneficiaries uh, more than once. So that's clear then. We have many questions and I would like to see because also some people were raising their hands. Manuel and Veronica, I don't know if, uh, if you are there. 
quizás ya se han contestado antes. If we still, we can give you the floor. Sí, muy bien. My question is, uh, uh, I asked a question, but uh, sorry, I needed a second part. I, I, we didn't get to that question, but my question was about emerging artists, if we can apply for these grants. Uh, but I, I checked the form and I saw there's a section where you are asked about the, well, the income and uh, how you're registered and if if it's if you're an artist who have not received any income yet um, any professional income how can you justify that or what do we need to 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 say in this section of the form thank you well these questions are uh, basically just like it's just a survey for us it's so you, we can have information it does not affect the, the evaluation of the application so uh, just because you didn't have any professional income yet it doesn't mean that you cannot set the application you just choose the option that better adjusts to your situation and that's and that's it but it does not affect the, the evaluation Hello, I think that maybe my question was not clear enough. We are a residency. Can we apply as a residency? But then these artists that usually work with us, if they could apply on their side, they could apply for their individual mobility grants. I received the five uh, Irish artists here in Spain, and these five artists in Spain, they would go to Ireland as a group uh, with an individual mobility action for a group. But it is a project that I would like to be like um, joined, right? Because we would get together with the artists that with the spanish artists that go there and the irish artists that come here because it's a um, we deal with sustainability uh, so we we would like to have an exhibition on both uh, locations uh, outside from from the grant that, that would be something something else we would like for additional funds for that but would it be possible to have that well, this is a, we need to see who's the beneficiary of the grant. In this case, you as a legal entity, you can apply for the residency grant and invite five Irish artists. And that's great. You can have them here. They would visit your organization. You work on the project. And these Irish artists, uh, if then they want to have an additional individual project with uh, individual mobility, they could. But then I understand that you also, within your project, there are five Spanish artists which would go to Ireland, but there's no uh, uh, international partner in Ireland that could host them. So they would ask, they would apply for the individual mobility uh, grant to go to Ireland for the project. That would be allowed. Uh, in this case, your entity would not be mentioned in the group, but they would need to find an international partner in Ireland, which would be the, the entity. And, and we have possible partners there. So that would be like they would do that on one side and I would do the other side, the, the, the Spanish part of the of the project. So that's allowed. Yes, yes, that you can do. OK, thank you very much. We have 26 questions, but we've used up all the time. Uh, I don't know if uh, we're going to, to, to close. It's been too long. We have our interpreter who is already exhausted. Um, uh, so, but, but you can send your questions uh to creative europe also to uh, uh to the culture Moves europe uh, email and we, we, we will we will answer all all your questions so thank you very much mm, thank you for 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 all of you for being here for your participation i don't know if augusto if you want to close uh, 
uh, well, I, my participation is not what's most important today. Uh, we were just here to host our uh, three uh, uh, guests, Gosha, Loli, and Alvaro. I really want to thank you again for your participation. I insist on the idea that you are always there willing to participate in our webinars, and that is very helpful for us because you are the ones who can, who, who have all the information that we need we are the well mere intermediaries here um you know that you will we will have we will send you a survey now sorry about insisting but it's very helpful for us as well if we could please receive your feedback so that would be all thank you gosha thank you loli and alvaro thank you to maria our interpreter you, you can't see here, but, but it's also essential work. We will upload the both versions of this webinar, Spanish and English. And thank you to Nacho as well, working in the production of the, of the, of the workshop. And well, just uh, bear in mind that we will have, we have future sessions coming. Uh, we have Music Moves Europe and also um, uh, audience development. And that one we will be face to face, you know where we are, uh, you can contact us and we'll see you next time.